Hello and welcome to Corona Crisis. My name is David Haythornthwaite and I'm the chairman of AFC Filed. And over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, I'm hopefully going to take you through what goes on behind the scenes of a non-league football team at times like this. Uh, we're going to discuss all the issues regarding uh, behind the scenes, the players, uh, off-field staff, all the things that contribute to the to the running of the club uh, and how we're dealing with the issues that have been thrown at us on a daily and weekly basis. Uh, so that it gives you a really good insight to the club uh, and the running of clubs in general. So I look forward to you joining me on this journey. So David, thanks once again for joining us as we look to give another episode of Behind the Scenes at AFC Filed. There's been a lot of discussion recently about how football, when it returns, can use the opportunity that it's had now to make it a more sustainable business. There's been plenty of views put forward, different ideas from different chairmen. Can we just get a few of your opinions on a few of those ideas, such yeah, as yeah. salary caps, the the loan players situation, how that can be done differently, and parachute payments as well? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, there's an old saying, isn't there... Uh, Adam, that uh, a lot of good comes out of bad. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that one, but it's it, it's true. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, although it's a really bad situation, then I think we're going to come out a lot better on, on the other side, where we've got a more sustainable uh, football uh, set up in this country, really. Um, because it's certainly not sustainable uh now uh, in in its present form so i think that was good and, and a lot of the things that have been talked about uh, in that uh, are as you mentioned parachute loan players salary caps so uh, and, and these have been muted by various di different uh, people so um i think if we take if we take parachute payment first it's an interesting one really and it's something that that i hadn't particularly thought about myself, but um, obviously Rick Perry uh, came out with it this week when he was talking about football and football, you know, in, in the EFL, um, and particularly football as it relates to the championship. All leagues, you get parachute payments. Uh, but I think what he was saying, uh, and and I think it's it's a fair, a very fair point and argument, is that the parachute payments totally, totally distort uh, the, the, the imbalance in the league uh, because of course it allows uh, you know you've got people coming down with 40 50 60 million parachute payments uh, and, and of course that gives them a massive advantage competing against the other clubs in, in that league that don't have any parachute payments as an example you know Leeds United wouldn't have any parachute payment uh, whatsoever but that some of the clubs that came down had huge ones so He's saying that, uh, you know, it's almost an evil, I think, I think he used that word, maybe something similar to that, uh, and that, that it should be got rid of. And I, I must admit, I never thought about it, but having thought about it and having thought about it in our context, uh, it, it, it's certainly the case. And, and in the case of, say, in our league uh, this season, then Yeovil Town uh, and uh, Notts County, who came down from the football league, certainly got some pretty reasonable uh, payments they also get payments uh, which are aligned to academy setup and everything like that so i think i remember when Tranmere were down it was i think the figure was somewhere around four hundred thousand uh in, in our league that and i think they, they go for two years and if you don't get back up you lose it and they were desperate and they managed to get up the second time uh but they were in, in great danger of losing that uh, parachute payment so in the context of 400,000, and if, if that number's wrong, I'm sorry, uh, but I'm sure it's about that uh, about that level. You've got to put that in the context of the money uh, that we get, which I've well, talked about a number of times, 90,000 we get our solidarity payment, 90,000. So it obviously our level. And when I come on to, in a few minutes, on to salary caps and something like that, it'll give you an indication of the huge impact of, 
of these parachute payments. So yeah, something really, really worth looking at and, and a good idea and a good suggestion from, from Rick Perry there. Don't agree with what I've said, but definitely agree uh, that that's something worth looking at. I think the other area uh, that was discussed this week uh, was from uh, Peterborough Chairman uh, Adam, what's Peter? Darren McAntony. Darren, Mac Darren McAntony, yeah. So he, 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 he obviously was again, I think doing a little bit of a podcast, uh, you know, about the state of play or maybe he's been interviewed on Sky. I can't remember where it was. Uh, and it was later picked up in the papers, which, which is where I got it. But he made uh, a very valid point as well regarding lone players. And uh, what, what happens with lone players is that, of course, uh, they are just that. They are players that are loaned out to other clubs um usually uh always always in, in in all cases the sort of loans shall we say go downhill so premiership ideally if they can want to loan out to uh, championship championship like to do league one etc 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 doesn't always work that way but again it depends on the player and and a lot of the younger ones tend to maybe from the premiership can maybe go into league one or league two and he was making the point, of course, is that the, all clubs, and ironically, the funny thing is he was being critical of the Premier League, but uh, every league is as bad, is that when they loan the players out to a club such as ourselves, uh, they want us to pay, in some cases, all of the players' wages. And his, his suggestion and his point was that this is is totally unfair because really the Premiership are loaning players uh, out. A good example would be, wouldn't it? I mean, a good success story, uh, I think was, uh, I think he's still there, Patrick Bamford. Isn't he? He, he's, he's a Chelsea, playing for Leeds United at the moment. I've been pretty successful. He, he's an example. So whatever Chelsea are paying Patrick Bamford, let's just use a number. Uh, let me guess 10,000 a week. Um, then, depending on how well Leeds have been able to negotiate that, then they could be paying the whole of the £10,000 back to Chelsea. I do think he's there permanently now. At least. Is, but, is but, he but, there but, permanently but, the now? But he was one, yeah. wasn't he, that, as an example, uh, last season, there was a couple of good lads, weren't there, and again, the names escaped me, who were at Derby last season from Chelsea, you know, when Derby got to the playoffs. And, Mason uh, Mount. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, and, and his argument is, look, hang, hang on, guys, you've got lots of money. You are loaning the players out so they get experience of real football and competing so they can better themselves. They're not quite ready to get into the Chelsea first team or the Tottenham first team or United's first team. They better themselves. So would you, basically saying, would you mind, uh, you know, sort of playing them for us and looking after them? Uh, and uh, until they're ready for our first team. Effectively, that's what they're saying, isn't it? And he's quite right when he said that it, it's ludicrous that uh, they should you know, ask to be paid for that. They should almost kind of be paying us to do it. And let me give you a case in point down at our level uh, this season, because you'll, you, you'll know, Adam, that you know, we got into uh, we, we got into a mess this season. Uh, you know, we made a lot of bad decisions uh, at football level, and so we we ended up in a bit of a scramble um, of trying to uh, first of all find a goalkeeper, uh, which we eventually did. And just to, to give you an indication, uh, that that particular player. Uh, came came to us, uh, and I think his I think his wages was somewhere around eleven hundred a week, something like that. I think where he was at, yeah. And when he came to us, uh, we ended up still paying, I think eight hundred pounds to take that player on. Now, this in this particular case, it wasn't, shall we say, a loan to better that particular player. This was a very experienced player. This wasn't a young player. But it doesn't matter, really. It's the principle, really. And and to me, we shouldn't be paying, in that case, more than 50% of the wages. 
more than 50% of the wages. And if it's a youth, if it's a development player that they want to put out and they want, you know, can you play him? Can you get this lad? You know, a lot of times when you take somebody on a, on a loan, one of the uh, stipulations, they, they can't enforce it, but one of the stipulations is, well, if we're going to take him, put him out on loan, we want him to play. Now, one of those players that were, did really, really well for us came from Bristol City. Before your time, Adam, but you'll have heard of him, Johnny Smith, came to Bristol City, did really, really well. The next season, he went to Tranmere, did okay. And this year, he's on loan at Oldham, and he's the star player. Now, I've heard that he's going to get a contract at Blackpool uh, next year, uh, Johnny Smith. Good, good, good young player. Uh, but he was one that was developed. So he came in and was developed by us for Bristol City. And we developed so much, he then went to the higher league, and he said, right, he can compete there, and hopefully he was going to play in their team. And I think when you got players like that, then the cost should be borne by the loaning club. Yeah, the club that's loaning him out, not the club that's uh, that, that he's going to. So I think very, very good point there from uh, from Darren at Peterborough. And, and again, I think that will stimulate debate. And I think that's one of the things that probably needs to be sorted out as well. So uh, interesting. I suppose he takes his... You know, that takes us nicely on to, to salary cap. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted this, uh, as I'm sure all, all chairmen are, that this conversation started. Um, because, you know, salaries in all levels are, are ludicrous. You know, I, I made I made the point in uh, some uh, some interviews ago about, I use the most of our situation. You know. Would he play for 50,000 a week? He's on two fifty now. Would he play for fifty? Of course he would. Uh, and if we go all the way down to our league, uh, or, or to the lower leagues, uh, there, there are still some ridiculous uh, salaries being played to players. Um, and I think that that will 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 stop. Now the number that I I kind of understand is that's being firmed up again. I mean conversations with with chairman at, at, uh, of different clubs. Here. I think at the moment they're talking about 2.5 million in League One and 1.25 million in League Two. Yeah, 1.25 million. Just again, just to remember, in one point, in, in 1.25 million, is that you're going to get in solidarity. And again, this could all change. It depends on what Sky deal. I'm sure there's going to be a fallout from all this with Sky. But if the Sky deal stays the same and, and the solidarity payments stay the same and don't get reduced, then you get about 900,000 to a million pounds in League Two. So if we'd been promoted, if we hadn't lost at Wembley, been promoted, we were going to get 900,000 to a million pounds. So if you then say that the salary cap is 1.25, almost all of your solidarity payment takes care of your wages. And then your crowd, yeah, and the other income you get can pay the rest of the staff. Yeah, everybody else involved with the cup got the upkeep and everything like that. And therefore you start to get to some sense of normality and sustainability. So I think that makes tremendous sense. So I'm disappointed that, you know, non, and, and that's been, you know, I was asking someone uh, how that started in actual fact, uh, I was talking to, to Gary Neville, I, I don't want to sound like I'm Gar name dropping, but I was talking to Gary and he's, he calls me on quite a few things because we got to know each other through when he started Salford and he came to me asking about uh, ideas uh, and, and we sort of talked to each other ever since. But I was asking him the other day, I said, well, how, how's it started? He said, well, there's about a core of about 10 chairmen in League Two and 10 chairmen in League One. Who are basically driving this? So it's self-driven. It's not. It's not a Rick Barry situation, chairman. And I think that's the right way to do it. And I hope that in our league, that the chairman uh, will come together. And, and it's one of the initiatives that I'm going to take when I've got a little bit of time over the weekend uh, is to write to all the chairmen in, in our league to uh, try and get a working committee together to get to get an agreement on <clears throat> a salary cap. Uh, for, for the National League. That makes absolute sense. So, <clears throat> having said that, when you come up with an idea, you also need to be able to uh, to give some sort of indication 
you know, what 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 would your plans be? I suppose is the obvious question. And the number that, that I've again bounced past a couple of people uh, is about seven hundred and fifty thousand. Now, what they're talking about, just to go back to lead to again in my conversation with, with Gary, was what they were talking about there was that a salary cap of 1.25, but importantly, a player maximum wage of 950 a week. And I think those two are very important to link those two together. Now, when you say also the salary cap of 1.25, then that includes, Adam, signing on fees, agent fees, uh, you know, appearance, it includes everything. It's all wrapped into that. So, uh, the days of uh, my favourite uh, friends, the agent, making massive amounts of money are going to disappear, disappear massively. So that's that. So that's an idea. So if we go down to our level, I think we're probably talking about a 750 cap. Some people would argue less, I'd imagine. I imagine some people, the wealthier ones who want a higher cap. But I think 750, when we got to Wembley, I think I've said this before, when we got to Wembley last year, our wage bill was about 750. Remember, I think I told you in the early interview that Leighton Orient told me you can't do it without spending 1.25 million. Uh, so we, we spent about 750. So I know it's possible, and we put together a pretty damn good squad for 750. Uh, that's not including managers, just players. So. I think 750 is definitely doable. You can you can put together a good team, uh, and I think that therefore the, the, the wage cap should be somewhere around 750 a week. I would suggest. Again, uh, there, there'll be some people watching this who aren't going to particularly like my view on that, but I think, guys, we need to start getting real, and I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, especially if you got 1.25 in a, in in League Two. Uh, you, you know, it, it, by definition, it, it's got to be, it's roughly half what League, League One is proposing of 2.5. Yeah, I think the talking out in Championship, I saw something banded around that 7,000 a week maximum for a player. So down at our level, I mean, 750, maybe a reasonable number, it might end up less than that. And of course, what it does is it then makes us all be a lot more selective in what we do. And it also makes our manager's skills now a lot more important, doesn't it? Being able to, to not just be able to, shall we say, buy your way to glory. So interesting times and certainly some of the things that I'll be supporting, all those things, uh, you know, parachute payment, uh, I think should be got rid of. Loan players, I think, uh, in, not in all instances, but in most instances, the cost should be borne by the loaning club. Uh, and I think in salary caps, definitely we need it. We need it for football, we need it for the game. And I think also, you know, when we do all these things, that the that, 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 that spectators will have a far greater uh, respect for, for football and, and, and for the players in, in, in general. So again, only good things, I think, Adam, to, to come out of this. Okay, thanks for your views. Okay.